Hi and welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to look at the multiple choice section of the National 5 2022 paper. A link to this paper can be found in the description box below. For question 1, you want to use page 4 of your databook where you will have the full periodic table. You can use this first to identify the four different elements that we have here using their atomic number. A is hydrogen, B is arsenic, C is rhodium and D is radon. If you then look at page 4 of the databook, all of the metals are on the left and below the dark line. This means C is the metal. Atoms have three subatomic particles. Within the nucleus, you have protons which are positive and neutrons which are neutral. In energy shells around the nucleus, you have electrons which are negative. Atoms are neutral because you have an equal number of positive protons and negative electrons. To understand what happens when liquid water turns to steam, we need to look at the structure of water. Water is made of molecules of H2O. The hydrogen and oxygen atoms are held together with strong covalent bonds. The molecules are held together by weak forces of attraction. When you boil liquid water, you break these weak forces of attraction. You do not break the covalent bonds within the water molecules. This means that when liquid water changes to steam, the answer is A, weak forces of attraction between the water molecules are broken. When you add more solute to a solution, you are adding more particles for the given volume. This means that the concentration of the solution will increase. This is going to be answer C or D. When you add more solvent to a solution, this means that you now have a larger volume. You will have the same number of particles as you previously had, and therefore the concentration will decrease, giving answer C. You should be familiar with the different shapes of covalent molecules. The first shown here is tetrahedral. The second is angular. The third is linear. And the last is trigonal pyramidal. You've been asked which of these would be described as angular. It's SO2, which is answer B gives you a lot of information about electronegativity. The key sentence is that the bigger the difference in electronegativity values, the more polar the bond. We want to find the bond with the most polar. Therefore, we need to find the two with the biggest difference in electronegativity, which is hydrogen and oxygen. Therefore, A, OH, would be the most polar. To be able to answer question 7, you need to understand the charges in the ionic compound copper chloride. You have Cu2 plus and then two Cl minus ions. The Cu2 plus will be attracted to the negative electrode. This will then form as copper solid on the negative electrode. This will be answer A or D. Chlorine is a negative ion and therefore is attracted to the positive electrode. Here it will form chlorine gas. Therefore the answer will be A. Questions such as this are wanting to know if you can understand what a base is. A base is a metal oxide, metal hydroxide or metal carbonate. It also expects you to understand what an acid would be. A. Calcium oxide is a base. B. Hydrogen nitrate, if dissolved in water, would be an acid. And C. Sodium hydroxide is also a base. D. Potassium ethanoate is formed during neutralisation of an acid and is therefore the salt is soluble and is a weak base. Therefore, when it's bubbled into water, it will form a solution with a pH greater than 7. This means that the answer will be D, pH 9. In question 10, we are collecting a colourless liquid when gas X is burned. This colourless liquid is likely to be water, which would imply that X contains hydrogen. In the lime water, there is no change. This means that carbon dioxide is not being produced when gas X is burned. This means that X does not contain carbon. If we now look at the answers, we need to know what each of them contains. Methane is CH4, carbon monoxide is CO2, hydrogen is H2, and ethane is C2H6. Therefore, all of the compounds containing carbon can be eliminated, leaving behind only hydrogen, C. For this question, you want to use page 9 of your databook. You'll need to know the names for each of these molecules. A is butane, which has a boiling point 
of negative 1 degrees Celsius. B is but one in, which has a boiling point of negative 6 degrees Celsius. C is butanoic acid with a boiling point of 164. And D is butan 2 all which has a boiling point of 100 degrees. Therefore, butanoic acid has the highest boiling point. Question 12 is testing your knowledge of different reactions. Decolorization of bromine solution means that there must be a carbon to carbon double bond. Forming an acidic solution when added to water means there needs to be a carboxyl group, C double bond OOH. A contains a carboxyl group, but no carbon to carbon double bond. B contains neither of the functional groups. C contains a carbon to carbon double bond, but no carboxyl, whereas D has both. When you're given a set of structures from which to work out a general formula, it's best to start by writing out the formulae. Make sure you write this out in the same format as the general formula is given in the answers. Here we can see that if we can compare the formulas of the three compounds that are given to the general formulas that have been given here, we can see that we have Cn, H2n, O. This is B. Question 14 is a problem solving question. Here we've been given a cycloalkane. Cycloalkanes have the general formula Cn, H2n. They need to have a minimum of three carbons to form a ring. So let's start with the first cycloalkane, C3H6, and calculate the gram formula mass. This happens to be 42, which is B. If this was not the answer, then you could work your way up through the other cycloalkanes to find the answer. Question 15 is testing your knowledge of the different types of bonding. Metallic bonding is a force of attraction between positive ions and delocalised electrons, A. B is not a type of bonding, as all bonding is between positive and negative particles. C is a definition for ionic bonding, and D is a definition for covalent bonding. Question 16 gives you some information to compare to the table. First of all, we have a melting point. This needs to be above 600 degrees, which means we can eliminate A. Density needs to be below 3, so of the three options that are left, only B can be the answer. For question 17, you need to use page 8 of the databook. This gives you the solubilities. If we have a look at aluminium oxide, we find that that is insoluble. Calcium oxide is soluble, copper oxide is insoluble, as is lead oxide. Therefore, we can eliminate calcium as one of the options, as we need to have an insoluble substance. For extraction by electrolysis, only the most reactive metals are extracted by electrolysis. You can use page 10 of the databook to help you find the most reactive metal. Here it would be aluminium. Question 18 is looking at electrochemical cells. We're looking at the electron flow in the cell. Electrons flow through the wires, therefore we can eliminate A and B as answers. Electrons will flow from the more reactive to the less reactive metal. You can use page 10 of the data book to help you find this out. It will go from aluminium to nickel. Therefore, D is the answer. For question 19, you want to use page 10 of the data book. You want to find the metal which is furthest away in reactivity from magnesium. In this case, that is B, lead. For question 20, you can use page 10 of the data book to help you confirm that the equations which you've been given are in the correct orientation. You should have the more reactive equation flipped over, which in this case is sulphite and it has been flipped over. The next thing you need to do is to check that you have the same numbers of electrons in each equation and that they're on opposite sides of the equation, which they are. You then need to combine the two equations. When you do this, you need to eliminate the electrons. Answer A still has the electrons present and therefore cannot be the correct answer. Answer B has Beaker A's equation flipped over, which is incorrect. Answer C is the correct answer. Answer D does not contain the water or hydrogen ions from the sulphite equation, which are required. In question 21, we've been given a section of polymer and we need to work out what the monomer was. To do this, we need to find the repeating unit of the polymer and then reinsert the double bond. If we have a look at the answers that have been given, we can see they all start with the carbon with two hydrogens. So if we start from here, we want to find the repeating unit, 
which will be the section of two carbons which would be allow us to draw out the monomer. The monomer needs to contain a carbon to carbon double bond so we can eliminate C and D. A has the CH3 group on the right hand carbon which is required, therefore A is the monomer. The Ostwald process is used to produce nitric acid, HNO3. The catalyst used for this is platinum. Question 23 is testing your knowledge of half-life. Half-life is constant for each radioisotope, therefore the half-life of the radon in the plant will be the same. Question 24 is looking at the use of radioisotopes for medical use. If the radioisotope needs to be emitted and escape through the skin, then this means that it needs to penetrate through the skin. Therefore, we cannot use alpha which would be blocked by a piece of paper or your skin, so we need to use beta. This would be answer B or D. If you're using a radioisotope within the body, then you want the half-life to be relatively short so that the radioisotope will decay within the body. Therefore, the answer is D. Question 25 is testing your knowledge of chemical apparatus. When you're trying to measure out volumes for a titration, you need to use the most accurate equipment possible. The scales on the side of beakers and conical flasks are not accurate. A measuring cylinder is more accurate, but a pipette of 25 millilitres will measure out only 25 millilitres and is therefore the most accurate. Thank you for watching my video. I hope that you found it helpful. Please remember to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified of new videos. You can also follow me on Twitter at Miss Adams Kim and Instagram Miss Adams Chemistry for updates on new videos and flashcards throughout the year. Bye for now.